डॉक्टर हेमा चौधरी प्रोफेसर एंड डीन एट के आर मंगलम यूनिवर्सिटी गुरुग्राम द लेक्चर सीरीज इज बेस्ड ऑन डिस्पेंसिंग फार्मेसी मॉड्यूल इन फार्मास्यूटिक्स डिसिप्लिन अंडर फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंसेस डिस्पेंसिंग इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ प्रिपेरिंग एंड सप्लाइंग मेडिसिन under this series it is very important to understand how to select a dosage form continue with its preparation and hand over to the patient introductory lecture today is based on a comprehensive insight on types of different dosage form what is a dosage form well as it's a very well known fact that drugs are rarely administered as pure chemical compounds instead they are given as dosage form various kinds of additives are admixed with drugs in order to fabricate a dosage form the transformation of drug by processing it into a predetermined form by mixing with additives and each additive having a specific function is a dosage form the dosage form basically are intended for compounding drugs based on their physico chemical incompatibilities between the drugs drug additives product container and expected therapeutic efficiency the additives which are selected are basically selected based on building a product which is physically and chemically stable and also intended to have a biological stability a dosage form is the art in addition to having the knowledge to prepare it it is very important to have an artistic sense to increase patient acceptance of the product a dosage form formulation should be less complicated and should contain minimum ingredients so that on compounding the drug product should maintain a good stability having understood the definition of dosage form and its basis it is very important to understand the merits of a dosage form the merits of dosage form includes drug handling there are drugs which are very challenging moieties in order to dispense drugs which are difficult to handle a dosage form is the rescue also uh, the merit covers utility some drugs which are impractical unfeasible to administer they can be administered by means of a dosage form it also helps in improving the stability of the drug some drugs have inherent chemical instability a dosage form helps to build the drug's stability also the dosage form helps in safety it is very important to administer irritant drugs safely so dosage form helps in covering this parameter finally the merit includes acceptability the dosage form as a product has to be accepted by the patient and there has to be good patient compliance so dosage form helps in improving organoleptic qualities of a drug having understood the merits of a dosage form the next important unit is to understand the basis of classification the classification of dosage form is on different basis the first basis of classification is on its physical state the second basis is on route of administration and the third and the most commonly used basis is an integration of the base 1 and the basis 2 that is physical state and route of administration looking into the categorization of the first base of classification that is based on physical state generally we have solid dosage forms under which we have unit dose and bulk dose unit dose covers tablets capsules granules pills chewable tablets lozenges as well as dry powder inhalers under bulk dose we have powders the second under physical state is liquid dosage form a liquid dosage form can either be monophasic or biphasic in nature under monophasic we have mixtures linkers draughts elixirs 
syrups, drops, lotions, liniments and collodions. Whereas under biphasic it includes emulsions, suspensions, lotions and liniments. The third basis under physical state includes semi-solid dosage form. Under semi-solids we have ointments, paste, suppositories, gels and jellies. And the last categorization under physical state includes gaseous dosage form which covers aerosols. Coming to the second base of classification that is based on route of drug administration. If the drug is administered as a dosage form orally, it includes tablets, capsules, solutions, syrups, elixirs, suspensions, magmas and powders. If we are targeting the dosage form administration sublingually, it includes tablets, troches and lozenges. If the drug is administered as a dosage form parenterally, it covers solutions and suspensions. A drug can also be administered as a dosage form via conjunctival route which covers contact lens inserts and ointments. A drug can be administered via skin through epicutaneous or transdermal application which covers ointments, creams, paste, plasters, powders, aerosols, lotions and finally transdermal patches. The other route which can be explored for administration of dosage form include intraocular which covers solutions and suspensions. A dosage form can also be administered intranasally as solutions, sprays, inhalers and ointments. Drug can be administered as a dosage form through intra-respiratory route as aerosols and a drug can be administered through various body cavities such as vagina through solutions, ointments, emulsion foams, gels, tablets, inserts, suppositories and sponges. A drug which is administered rectally could be through solutions, ointments and suppositories. Now coming to the second state of classification that is with respect to integration of the first basis of classification and second basis of classification taking physical state and route of administration collectively. This is the most realistic and more rational type of classification wherein first we categorize based on physical state all the dosage forms into liquids, semi-solids and solids. Now taking up each categorization individually, first talking about liquids, they are basically classified into monophasic forms and biphasic forms. Going exclusively deep into monophasic categorization, the monophasic categorization is again classified based on route of administration into oral use, external use, parenteral use and special use. And then talking about semi-solid dosage forms, when we talk about integrated form of physical and root of administration, so first basically semi-solid dosage form is the physical state and on root of administration subclassified under internal and external use. And the examples under internal use could be gels and jellies. Whereas for external use, it could be ointments, creams, paste and poultices. The third categorization under the third basis of classification, which is based on physical state and route of administration, it could be classified as solid dosage form. Solid dosage form itself can be given under as such, that is in powder form itself. So powder form can be again categorized based on route of administration into oral route or external or parental route and with respect to oral route the subclassification goes broader as divided powders and compound divided powders. Whereas under external use we have different classes such as dusting powder, snuffs, insufflations, sprays, aerosols and dentrifices. The second type under solid dosage form could be either in compressed form which includes tablets, capsules and catchets. And the last categorization under solid dosage form is molded type which covers suppositories, tablet triturates, 
lozenges, pastilles and pills. Now talking about exclusively and understanding each type of classification what we have just looked into, the first elaborate discussion would be on liquid dosage form which are based on physical state and route of administration. So under that we are taking up monophasic liquid dosage form. To introduce a monophasic liquid dosage form, it is identified as single phase liquid systems composed of one or more pharmaceutical ingredient which is dissolved in a suitable solvent. These type of preparations are intended either for internal or external use. If the preparation is intended for internal use, they are either aqueous or hydroalcoholic based whereas monophasic liquids which are meant for external use are generally aqueous or non-aqueous based. Taking examples under this heading, first we have mixtures. Mixtures are also generally referred as oral solutions. The mixtures are basically clear liquid preparations having one or more active ingredient in a dissolved vehicle. Example could be aqueous iodine solution which is a proprietary product and also official in Indian pharmacopoeia. We have the second type under monophasic liquids meant for internal use as draughts. Draughts are intended to be taken as single dose preparations generally 50 ml in capacity by oral route. The drug is either dissolved or dispersed in solvents which could be water or syrup. These draughts are generally flavored preparations and are packed as single dose preparations. Example, paraldehyde draught which is official in British Pharmaceutical Codex. The third class under monophasic liquid dosage form for internal use include drops. Drops are generally administered for children. Hence, they are also referred as pediatric drops. These are small dose liquids administered without dilution and with the help of a dropper. Example, paracetamol drops. The next classification under monophasic liquid dosage forms are syrups. Linktuses. Linktuses are based viscous preparations which are intended to be sipped and swallowed slowly. Linktuses are generally meant for treatment of cough and the vehicle which have been employed in the preparation of linktuses are generally demulcent and having soothing action on sore mucous membrane of the throat. Generally, the linktuses are given in undiluted form. Example, codeine linktus which is an official preparation in National Formulary of India as well as British National Formulary. The next categorization under monophasic liquid internal use includes syrups. Now, syrups are sweet, viscous and nearly saturated aqueous solutions of sucrose. Syrup, which is generally official in Indian pharmacopoeia, contains 66.7% percentage weight by volume of sucrose and the syrup is also official in United States Pharmacopoeia and its composition is 85% or 64.7% weight by weight of sucrose. Syrups have the ability of self-preservation. Example, lemon syrup official in British Pharmaceutical Codex. The next type of formulation which comes under monophasic liquid dosage form for internal use are elixirs. Elixirs are clear, sweetened and flavored hydroalcoholic solutions meant for oral use. These are generally mixtures of co-solvents and are used to minimize adverse physiological effects and burning taste in the mouth. Generally, elixirs are aqueous solutions and always have alcohol added to it for improving co-solvency. Examples include pediatric paracetamol elixir official in British Pharmaceutical Codex. Now, talking about monophasic liquids meant for external use. 
when we talk about external preparations these are generally applied on external body surfaces they include first liniments now liniments are solutions or they are emulsions of aqueous or oily vehicles liniments are generally intended to be massaged onto the unbroken skin they are generally used as counter irritants rubefacients and for soothing effect liniments are either alcoholic saponaceous or oily in nature the example includes camphor liniment which is official in british pharmacopeia the second type of dosage form under monophasic liquid dosage form meant for external use are collodions collodions are non aqueous solutions of pyroxylin in ether alcohol base with or without the medicament they are generally intended to be applied to the skin collodions leave a film on drying over the skin example salicylic acid collodion official in british pharmaceutical codex the next type of dosage form under monophasic liquid dosage form meant for external use are lotions lotions by definition are suspensions emulsions or solutions they on application deposit the drug on skin surface for superficial effect they are generally applied to the unbroken skin without friction example salicylic acid lotion again official in british pharmaceutical codex next talking about monophasic liquids for special use till now we have covered monophasic liquids meant for internal use monophasic liquids for external use then we are talking about monophasic liquids which are meant for special use under this especially monophasic liquids used in the oral cavity under this we have the first type throat paints throat paints are viscous preparations of drugs for local action in the pharynx they are generally glycerin based and have to be applied with a brush example compound iodine paint inf that is indian national formulary it is also referred as mandel's paint the second type under monophasic liquid dosage form used in oral cavity are glycerides glycerides are viscous solutions of drugs in not less than 50% by weight of glycerin they are generally intended to be applied externally example borax glycerin official in indian pharmacopeia the third type under monophasic liquids in oral cavity are gargles these are clear solutions used in the posterior region of the mouth by agitating the solution with the help of exhaled air they are generally having local effect in the throat and they should not be swallowed in larger quantities example povidone iodine gargle the next type of dosage form covered under monophasic liquids meant for oral cavity are mouthwashes mouthwashes are clear solutions intended to be used in front of the uella to clean and to refresh the mouth is its purpose example zinc sulfate and zinc chloride mouthwash official in british pharmaceutical codex next under oral cavity monophasic liquid dosage form includes throat sprays a throat spray is a aqueous or a non aqueous liquid which is intended for spraying into the throat nose or onto the skin they are generally medicated and help to relieve diseases affecting the upper and the lower respiratory tract example povidone iodine spray the subheading under special use of monophasic liquids includes the one which are used in other than oral cavity under this the first type of dosage form is douches douches are aqueous solutions which are intended to clean deodorize soothe or medicate body cavities 
they are to be dispensed in concentrated form which is generally diluted to volume with 1 liter or 2 of warm water example sodium chloride douch the second type under monophasic liquids which are meant to be used other than oral cavity includes enemas enemas are aqueous or oily solutions or suspensions or emulsions of the drug intended for rectal administration they are generally intended for bowel evacuation they intend to bring either local or systemic therapeutic action or for diagnostic use example includes soap enema official in indian national formulary the next type of monophasic liquid dosage form which can be used in other than oral cavity includes eye drops eye drops are sterile aqueous preparations which are intended to be instilled into the eyes they are generally isotonic in nature example timolol maleate eye drops the next type under monophasic liquid dosage form used in other than oral cavity covers ear drops ear drops are solutions or suspensions or emulsions of a drug in water or glycerin or propylene glycol which are intended into the ear they are meant for removal of excessive cerumen treat infections inflammation pain or helping in cleaning and drying of ear example sodium bicarbonate ear drops official in british pharmaceutical codex the next category under monophasic liquids meant for use in other than oral cavity are eye lotions eye lotions are sterile aqueous solutions which are applied to an eye bath for washing of the eye the large volume of fluid to flow quickly over the eye the next categorization under monophasic liquid dosage form used in other than oral cavity includes nasal solutions nasal solutions are aqueous or oily and they are rendered isotonic and may be slightly buffered to maintain the ph between 5.5 to 6.5 nasal solutions are used intranasally to relieve nasal congestion or inflammation and to combat infection example hydrocortisone nasal drop next we go into the second categorization of liquid dosage form that is biphasic liquid dosage forms the biphasic liquid dosage forms are subdivided into liquid in liquid type or solid in liquid type liquid in liquid type based on route of administration is categorized into meant for oral use and meant for external use under oral use we have emulsions and based on external use the classification goes by into liniments and applications when talking about emulsions liquid and liquid type oral use these are thermodynamically unstable heterogeneous biphasic systems containing immiscible liquids where one of the liquid is dispersed in the other liquid by the help of a stabilizing agent called an emulsant the conventional example under an emulsion covers liquid paraffin emulsion when we talk about biphasic liquid dosage form that is liquid in liquid meant for external use we have liniments liniments are liquid or semi liquid preparations which are applied to the skin as an counter irritant the example is turpentine liniment official in indian pharmacopeia finally we have liquid in liquid for external use applications these are liquid or semi liquid preparations applied on the skin they are used to retain the drug in contact with skin for prolonged period of time and they are generally applied as larger portions on skin example benzyl benzoate application The next categorization of biphasic liquid dosage form covers under solid in liquid type. When we talk about biphasic liquid dosage form, solid in liquid type 
either it could be administered orally as suspensions now suspensions are mixtures containing insoluble solids they are generally heterogeneous thermodynamically unstable liquid systems insoluble solid particles are uniformly dispersed or distributed in liquid phase the suspending agent is added as a physical stabilizer example covers magnesium hydroxide mixture british pharmacopeia thank you